To the heroes of the American 5th Division come honors from their French allies. In special ceremonies at Metz, the American General Irwin presents the Distinguished Service Cross to Sergeant Dale Rex. He saved a whole company. The Croix de Guerre goes to another generation of young Americans, fighting like their fathers beside the French. Traditional brothers in arms since 1776, the forces of liberty are marching toward Berlin. In London, blitzed by German bombs, American soldiers come to help in reconstruction. Britain's public works minister, Sands, greets them. Well, all I can say to you is that this act of friendship of yours will be long remembered and treasured by the people of London. Thank you very much. As a tribute to the English people in their fifth year of war, these engineer troops begin the job of rebuilding. Selected for their experience in the building trades, the soldiers work at their neighborly task. Eight hours a day, seven days a week, 3,000 soldiers from combat engineering units and other specialized branches of the American forces are laboring in London at this work. They get no time off. They want no time off until the homes are built. But they have to take time out for food, served here on the site. Wherever the need is greatest, American fighting men lend willing hands to help their allies around the world. General Eisenhower brings Christmas greetings to international forces fighting for liberty. Soldiers of France, Tommies from Britain, Canadians and Americans from across the Atlantic, representatives of the United Nations fighting in the sky, on the ground and over the sea, gather here now to hear the Supreme Commander. I want to thank you men for the magnificent Christmas present you have given to the people of the United Nations. Speaking for the people of the United Nations, I should like to say thank you, men. Now, a Merry Christmas to all of you. If it ha doesn't happen to be so very merry this year, next year we'll be sure that it will be. Good luck to all of you. Okay. From America, this congressional delegation comes to the Western Front on a democratic mission. To safeguard the welfare of America's citizen soldiers, 17 congressmen investigate conditions along the German border. General Patton tells Congressman Merritt, head of the delegation, about the Third Army Drive as the tour starts. Representatives Pagan and Farrington Mrs. Luce, the Congresswoman playwright, and Sparkman, Costello, and Thomas serve on the House of Representatives Military Affairs Committee. The group travels toward the battle line, observing American weapons and supplies powering the big push to the Rhine. Off 
to look over newly liberated areas behind the lines, they stop here at the famous cathedral of Metz. On their return home, they will make their report to the American nation. Six Allied armies from Holland down to the southern Vosges are locked in bitter combat with the Nazis. Here, the outer ring of the Nazi defense system begins near Strasbourg and the lower Rhine. Fort Mutzig, taken by the American 7th Army, guarded a mountain gap. The Vosges bastion is rimmed by pillboxes with subterranean galleries. But even the thickest walls crumbled under Allied bombardment. Behind thousands of gun posts studying their Siegfried line, the Nazis had planned to halt the Allies. Entrenched in sites like this, the Wehrmacht had expected to gun the forces of liberation back. But here, the Reich miscalculated. More Nazi soldiers surrender, schoolboys too young to fight, and men beyond military age fill the German ranks. Further north, nearing the Rhine, the American advance hits Hagenau. Men and tanks move in. Casualties are high for the Allies, but far higher for the enemy. Hagenau, the Nazis admit, forms the hinge of their withdrawal into Germany. The troops advance warily. Enemy gunners hide to cover the Wehrmacht retreat. The soldiers flush out snipers, rooting them from their nests. On the Western Front since D-Day, German losses total a million and a half men. In the South and at Strasbourg, the French and American forces pushed to the Rhine itself, the waterline of Germany. From the Strasbourg shore, the forts of Kell are within range of American guns. At this southern gateway to Germany, Allied guns pound the inner walls of the Reich. Reich Citadel on the Rhine, and its industries power the Nazi war machine. 